I created my very first website uh, a long time ago, uh, I think around 2000. And it was a website for kind of like eBay, my about me page. But I was living in Poland at the time, so it was for, for so-called Allegro. But it's ex exactly like eBay. So uh, this is how my very first website was looking like. So um, we had a very, very nice, uh, very nice uh, session about templates before, so I'm really apologize about it. The funny thing is I still can find websites looking like this today, and even some new websites. So they're actually good, good, uh, good information for us because we have a lot of work to do, I think, before us, yeah. Um, a little bit about Sobi Pro and Sobi in common. Um, in 2006, uh, we had the idea to create a small website for our uh, city. And um, this website should include kind of business director, like yellow pages or something like this. But there was no suitable co component for this, so we created our uh, one component by ourselves, and we shared it with the community. And this uh, component became very popular very, so very fast, and people started asking for new features and, and new ideas and so on. So, like, we released Sobi 1 uh, in 2006 in May, and four, five, five months later we released a new, fully new component called Sobi 2, which was a really probably the very first CCK for Joomla. Um, but people still start to asking for new features, and the problem with Sobi2 Sobi was that you could organize only one directory. So either you had Joomla yellow pages, kind of, or you could use, you, you could use it for, like, example, a real estate directory, or even we had some cases in UK where someone created with Sobi2 a cow directory. So the directory with different cows was listed, were listed. Um, so, it, we were thinking about it a little bit, and so we decided to create a fully new component which allow us to create more than one director inside one extension. And the first release, Beta 1, was in September 28, 2011. And the last big change, we decided to re-implement the user interface in 2013, in June. Um, the main idea about the re-implementation was we wanted to create a new user interface in the administration area. Uh, fortunately, exactly at the same time, Joomla 3.0 has been released, and it was, the decision has been made that Joomla 3.0 will be using Bootstrap as default uh, user interface, which was really cool for us because we could use Bootstrap as well. So we re-implement the user interface. and. Um, and uh, using Bootstrap, and, and we made it fully Joomla 3 uh, compatible. Now, the problem with the Joomla and with Sobi Pro 1.1.0 was that it has been created by me. And you saw the website I created before, so it's the problem. Uh, so this is a um, uh, screen which allows us to edit field configuration in the Sobi Pro administration area in Sobi Pro 1.0. When you want to change some uh, some some option about the, uh, some e input input option, then you have to look at here and here and here and, and 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 so on. For output option, you will need to take a look at here and here, and for general option, for example, here and here. So basically, it's a chaos. It's really very chaotic because I created right. Um, fortunately, we have a, a dictionary. That's the company uh, behind Sobi Pro. Uh, a very good and very skilled uh, developer with really good user user experience and user interface uh, skills, and this is my wife's secret. <laughs> so she basically rewrite the whole screen, and not this only one, but this is this uh, deals like, for example, uh, this is the same screen in Sobi Pro 1.1. So we have some in, uh, general option here. So we have other tab for output option, another one for input option, and another one from search options. Looks much better, right? So the very important thing to understand is we decide to rebuild the user interface uh, so it looks better with Bootstrap. And many people think that this is about 
looking cool. This is not really about looking cool, this is more about usability. So people can use it easily and understand it better. Uh, someone asked me before about multilingual mode in Sobi Pro, so I'm going to show you um, one, one uh, note before. Joomla allow us to create, to, 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 uh, to provide a multilingual website, a website where we can use multiple li uh, languages. Um, the problem that many people do not understand is that Joomla actually does not translate any articles what we are going to do in Joomla when we want to have article in two languages, we are going to create one article in, for example, English, and then we are going to create another article in, for example, German, and then we are going to bind those articles. But there are actually two separate articles. This, is, this approach is not bad. It makes sense in many cases when we have a, like a blog website or, or something like this. But Sobi Pro is mainly designed to be a directory extension. And we have the, when we have directory, we have most likely like about 100 or maybe 1,000 entries. And to translate those entries that way it would be really very difficult. So this is how we are go doing it in Sobi Pro. We have, um, this is the, web, uh, the front page. It's in English. We have a communication category. We're going to switch to German. And like you can see, nothing changes. Because obviously, the category is not translated yet. So we are going to the backend, to this particular category. And then we have a small button there where we can change the language. When we change the language, we will get a message, a notice about the fact that we are editing this category in another language. And then we are going to change the communication to communication in German. Save it. Now go back to the front end, refresh the website, and then, as we can see, we have now this communication in German. Of course, in English, it's still called communication. So I think it's uh, for multiple and um, many entities, a little bit better approach than Joomla provides itself. I told um, in my previous presentation about versioning in Joomla, we have versioning in Sobi Pro <coughs> since um, October 2013. Uh, Sobi Pro is a little bit more complicated. Uh, we had to put a little bit more work in, in it. Um, as I said before, it is really very, ex very, very important for many organizations to have versioning, to, have, to be able to, to follow the whole history of, of all changes and to be able to restore some changes. And this is how we are doing it in Sobi Pro. When we are going to an entry in the administration area, we have another, sorry, we have another tab called History there. And as we can see, we have all changes concerning this one entry locked in, like about uh, edit or it has been updated, has been uh, approved, and so on. And we can also add some small note to each of those actions so people could know. Why this, why this change has been made and so on. And when, when we go, for example, to we have to load, load this version buttons here, and when we click on it, then we are go, 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 getting a warning about, uh, about editing an old version, and then we have buttons beside each field where data has been changed to the actual, and when we click on it, we can see all those changes to the current version. As as we can see, obviously, in this case, the address has been, has been changed. <coughs> and the telephone number as well. So it works also for more complicated fields like text area, where we can exactly see what kind of uh, text has been deleted and, or changed and so on. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> oh, up. Okay. We have some kind of um, application uh, app store um, in Sobi Pro as well. Since um, basically since the version 1.0, we can install s additional application for Sobi Pro from the administration area in Sobi Pro by clicking on the field, field install and, and on the button install and then 
this application will be installed. Um, when, when someone is going to add an entry in Sobi Pro as a normal regist registered user, he is going to add an entry and this entry has, has to be approved by the administrator. Okay? When this user, however, later change something in this entry, uh, this change has to be approved by the administrator as well. And this is uh, something really funny because we got a lot of bug reports about these features because people are going to change something in the entry and they still see the old version. So like nothing changes actually. And they are reporting this as a bug. This is, this is uh, intentional behavior. You have to, the administrator has to approve those changes. So the administrator has full control over the directory, right? So, we have to explain to many people uh, about this. But once, uh, we have to explain that it's not a bug. But once one of the user who actually understood this feature asked us, okay, it's really cool and nice feature. So I have really, really exact control over my directory. But uh, I have a situation, someone changed something in his entry and I actually don't want to approve this change. So what am I going to do? Well, this was a bug. We didn't thought about it, that someone maybe want to reject this change. So in Sobi 1.15, I think, right? 1.15, we build another feature which allow the administrator to reject complete an entry or those changes. And uh, additionally, the administrator can notify the user why his change or why his entry has been rejected. And this is a, a window for it. We have a, a defined template for where you can have some predefined message why an entry has been, has been uh, rejected and so on. You can, of course, have as many of those templates as you wish. Uh, as we were creating the functional design for Sobi Pro, the most important thing, the most important goal for us was to create a fully flexible extension which can be customized as much people want. So basically, we are using a templating system in Sobi Pro, and this templating system allow us to change every piece of output uh, the Sobi Pro is generating in the uh, front end. By default, those template are using uh, a kind of automatic loop where all fields are going to be uh, displayed one after another. Uh, this is very convenient because when you are going to add a new field in the administration area, this field is automatically going to be used in the front end. But um, it's a little bit hard to style because all those fields are displayed one after another and the only one thing you have is CSS and this is not always the best solution to, to style your, your, your output. So the real power of Sobi Pro are so-called manually customized template. And then you can create something like this, where you can say, okay, I want this image here to, to have this image there, and I want to have the address here, and instead, for example, this set of uh, icons are actually a checkbox group in the uh, at entry form, but are displayed like images. So you can fully cost customize it. Um, this is another example of the same section, actually the same view. It's fully different kind of output, right? We have a table with Ajax sorting, uh, and and I think it. Did, I don't. I don't really like tables, but it, this in this uh, case it does make sense when you are presenting a set of products. Um, in 2012, I was uh, one of the co-organizer of the Joomla Day Poland. And we used Sobi Pro for the, for the event website. And this is, for example, uh, the section showing all speakers. And by the way, it is the same view as those two before. So it's, as you can see, you can do whatever you want with the output of, this, uh, of Sobi Pro. And this is also a screen from this, from this Joomla Day poem. This is the schedule of programs where you can simply show, um, yeah, list of session uh, um, ordered by, by time and so on. Um, 
This is our newest baby. This is the official Joomla event website. It's completely built with Sobi Pro and Joomla 3.2 still. I have to update this website. Um, this is a view or Google Maps module with, with showing all, um, all events uh, worldwide, all Joomla related events worldwide. I hope you can read it, but this is, this is called Joomla Day out here. <laughs> um, this website has also a calendar view. I think it's common view, everybody know how, what, what it does. Um, so you can also display entries of Sobi Pro in calendar view. And this is a events details page. I hope to see some of you uh, at this event. Who is going to Day and Beyond from here? Nobody? It's Peter. <laughs> it's really very, very good event. Um, and um, of course, the whole website is fully mobile friendly and responsive. Um, Sobi Pro has very sophisticated access control list. So um, basically you can, you can define a rule which describes how a particular user group, uh, which right particular user group has in particular section. So you can, for example, have a different section and in one section the user can be kind of administrator, for example, and you can set this, this uh, settings that way that th this particular user will be not even able to access the other section. So you can basically do whatever you want with this ACL. Um, as we were creating the functional design for Sobi Pro the very first time, um, well, we decide to not include every e and each feature in Sobi Pro itself. Um, don't know if you, maybe you have the same feeling, that, but I, I have sometimes. But I, for example, I know the situation that some developer developed some good extension for, for, for Joomla, and it was really nice and, 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 and it worked well, but people still asking them, uh, the, the developer for features. So he's putting new features and new features and that, is going to be bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and more complicated and at some point you don't you you you, you can't simply use it anymore because you have a lot of options you don't understand or you don't even want to use i think a notification is a very good example in sobi 2 we have include a notification functionality in sobi 2 itself it means when for example a user had a, a user or guest added a, an, an entry in this directory that administrator has been notified about this action, right? It makes sense. But for example, when you are using Sobi Pro or Sobi 2 for your website only, where you are, are the only one, one author, it doesn't make sense to have this functionality included at, at all, right? So we decide to, decide to create Sobi Pro as directory extension with the basic features and all those additional features you may uh, need, but may you may not need, uh, to provide like for, for uh, as an application. And we have plenty of them in the meantime. I'm going to present some of them, not all because we don't have that much time. <laughs> so we have, for example, import-export application, which allow us to import or export application from or to Sobi Pro using the comma separated value format. I think it's well known format. Um, important thing for us was to create a really flexible uh, user interface so the user can, can um, specify how the file, the comma separated file looks like. And so you don't need to edit the file to Sobi Pro but you can fit Sobi Pro to your file. You have much less work that way. Um, I think everybody knows the, the functionality called keywords or text. Used, it, it, it's going to be used in many blogs and, and, and in the meantime in Joomla you can use text almost for everything. So it's basically um, you can define a list of uh, keywords for a particular entry or article and you can aggregate 
those uh, those entries through this particular keyword. So when you click, for example, on on some keyword like grill, you will set, see a list of all entries with the same keyword. So um, we thought about it, and actually we decided to to, to uh, develop a field called aggregation field, not just for keyword because. This functionality make much more sense than just a keyword. For example, in the restaurant guide director, we can specify a cuisine which this restaurant offers. And we, when the visitor click on, for example, French, he will see all entries, all restaurant offering the French cuisine. The same way we, you can use this, uh, you, you can use this uh, field for um, address, uh, city, countries, and whatever. We have an application called Review and Rating application, which allows us to, yeah, to rate an entry. But it's much more advanced than just to write review and uh, to, to, to rate this entry. We can specify a set of criteria, like for example, um, what do we have there? Um, sorry, but okay, service, food, uh, ambience, pricing, location, cleanliness, and so on. Makes sense. This set of criteria makes sense, of course, for a restaurant. But when you, we have, for example, a hosting directory, you can specify own set of criteria like support, uh, customer service, um, speed, um, uh, hardware, and, and and so on. So we can uh, allow the user to create a much more advanced review and and, and rating. And this is how the input form for for this looks like. As you can see. Um, the user can write a subject and then uh, the review itself and, and then rate the specific criteria. Um, after we released Sobi Pro the first time, we, get, we, get, we got uh, some uh, feature requests. And for example, people were asking, about the functionality to report errors or spam on the website. Uh, or have a claim listing function. I don't know if you know. It's like a, when you have, for example, a business directory and someone uh, added your company in, into this directory and you see it and you want to have access to this particular entry in this business directory, so you can uh, ask the administrator about getting access to this entry so you can edit you, it, it by yourself. And the last functionality is the contact the author. So we have form uh, at the website where you can actually contact the author of this entry article or whatever. So I was thinking a little bit about it. And um, yeah, I did some research and, and was working a little bit. And at some particular uh, state of mind, I realized that actually those three functionalities is actually all the same, right? The, in, in case of those three, the three applications, what, what it does, it shows a form in the front end and it sends email somewhere. In case of report errors, it shows a form and send email to administrator. In uh, case of claim listing plugin, actually the same. In, in case of contact the listing owner, it's show a form and send email to the author of this entry. But actually, it's all the same. It's just the email address which is being used and the form, how it looks like. So we decide to create one field called this contact form field. And you can configure which kind of fields in this form should be displayed. <coughs> And in the administration area, you simply can say where this email should be sent. That's all. But it's one application. Another important application is so-called GeoMap field. This is a field which allows the user, the author of an entry, to, uh, to input, it, to define a set of coordinates for the, for the entry, so address and so on. Yeah, and of course, we are, of course, not going to to ask the user for uh, entering the GAO coordinates because the user most likely has no idea what GAO coordinates are. So uh, 
You can configure uh, it that way that if someone is adding entry, Google or the, the, uh, the field itself is trying to determine your location. You see, we added the uh, address and, and then the, uh, the zip code and we are actually already located. We have the set of coordinates here. The second possibility is to simply we have the browser go location. We can click on the locate me button and depend on Google speed, we have the location. Which, however, whatever is much more important, about a week ago we released a very new version of this field, which has additional feature, a very good feature, very nice feature, which allow us to search in the entries in, uh, in the radius. So we have this field in search, you can type your address here or use the same locate me functionality as before. And then we can simply click on the start search and we will see entries ordered by distance to this particular place. Um, I don't know if, if anybody knows this functionality. It's actually quite common functionality. In most cases, <laughs> do you have a question or no? Okay. In most cases, uh, you have to define also a radius to search, right? Well, we wanted to do this as well, but then we realized that actually not really is a good idea. I'm, I'm a lazy man, right? So I'm going to, when I'm going to, for example, search for a restaurant, I'm going to specify the radius for 10 kilometers because I'm lazy and don't want, want to walk too, too uh, far. But I am living uh, in a small village, so most likely I'm not going to find any restaurant in the radius of 10 kilometers. So I have to change the radius to 20 kilometers and start search again. And probably I will not find this restaurant as well. So I have to, you know, and, and so on and so on and so on. It doesn't make sense. You, when you are going to search for something, you want to have a list of entries of restaurant ordered by distance to you. And then you are going to decide by yourself if those, <coughs> those results are satisfactory for you or not. So we just remove it completely. And I think it might much more sense that way. Um, to this GeoMap field, we have also a GeoMap module, which show all entries in particular section. We saw it before on the uh, event Joomla website. We are using the same module. So you can show to, user, uh, to, the, to your visitor all entries having the set of Geo coordinates uh, on a map. And by, by the way, um, co uh, talking about templates, all this output is also fully customizable, so you can put in this, in this small windows whatever you want. It's a tough one. Um, we have a field called profile field, um, which allows us to create kind of members directory. Uh, members like authors or whatever. So when someone is going to use, uh, to add an entry at this particular section called member, um, by clicking, for example, the join, join us uh, button, uh, an entry in this directory will be created, but also a user in Joomla will be registered. So after it, this particular user is simply registered on the website. And he can also edit this, this entry, uh, this profile in this directory as well. If you ever downloaded Sobi Pro, um, you probably saw this screen. We have so-called download field, which allow us to create a download director. We can attach uh, one, one file or many files to, to a particular entry and have that way a download director. We can also specify a license for this file, so when someone is going to download this file, he has to, um, he has to accept uh, the license condition. This is the one I was talking about before. We have a kind of notification application which allows us to specify a trigger. So for, for example, when someone is going to add new entry uh, in our directory, an email will be sent to administrator, to the auto itself, and so on. And we can specify a lot of triggers. For example, when an entry has been added, when an entry has been updated, when this entry has been approved or has been published or un uh, unpublished and so on. 
and also when, for example, uh, in, in uh, cooperation with the Revit and Revit and the application, when someone, for example, add new review, added new review, uh, that the author will be notified or the administrator will be notified. For this, this is the screen message screen edit message edit screen. Sorry. Um, sorry about the email, but you can probably recognize much of it. You can specify to whom this email is going to be sent, CC, BCC, and you can use. Uh, we can use a lot of placeholder. So basically, we we could even send the complete the the, the complete entry with this email, so the administrator know what uh, that a user has added an entry and what this entry actually is. This is, uh, by the way, a very funny situation. We are using, uh, as I said before, we are using this Sobi Pro at the official event, uh, Joomla event website. And uh, before we, you, we use it Sobi Pro, we were getting uh, only emails like, a new entry has been added, a new event has been added, and awaiting approval. And it was actually one of the main reasons why we used Sobi Pro because of the notification application. Because as you probably know, um, we probably suspect at the event side we are going a lot of spam, spam entries. So every time you are getting a new message, new notification that new event has been added, you have to check what event is it. Yeah? When it's spam, normally you don't care. You can delete it later. When this, however, a really valid uh, event, you want to check it uh, on and, and, and approve it. So in Sobi Pro, now, uh, because we are using Sobi Pro, we know exactly when the, uh, a spam entry has been added. Well, OK, I can do this on, uh, on the weekend. But when a, a really uh, valid entry has been added, event has been added, then it's required really some action. Um, OK. Um, so let's summarize. Um, Sobi Pro is very flexible. You can use it um, actually for everything. Um, why it's important? What, what, is, what was our main goal developing Sobi Pro? So let's take a look. What do we have usually at a website, a typical website? We have probably some kind of um, news and info. We have maybe some blog. Uh, we can have a, like a download, uh, download section. We can have documentation. Uh, the complete Sobi Pro documentation at our website is, of course, the, uh, has been made with Sobi Pro. Um, we have some frequently asked questions, maybe some member section. Um, we have maybe web, web links. Some people still have web link section on, on, on their website. Um, we have events, maybe uh, calendar, some other directories, user, user registration functionality. We have maybe a uh, form. We can have we, we should have definitely some security uh, and backup tools Akiba backup or um, I secure exactly. Um, we have statistics like PWIC or maybe Google Analytics. Um, my point is basically all those things like uh, news info, web links, events calendar. You can do with one extension only with Sobi Pro. You don't need any other extension. And um, why it's important? I have a good exa example why it's really important. I have a blog website. It's not really big uh, because I'm not really a blogger, but I, but I have one there. Yeah. Probably everybody has to have one. Um, and I'm using Sobi Pro for the blog, and I'm using Sobi Pro for gallery. I have a small gallery of pictures. I have this website since Joomla 1.5, and I have never any really huge issue uh, upgrading from Joomla 1.5 to 1.6 to 1.7 to 2.5 to 3.0 oh, and 3.2 and 3.3, right? Because it's really very easy. You have only one, one main extension and some additional tools like, like backup tools and so on. But it's much more easier to update th this kind of website where you don't have uh, 100 components, 100 extensions for everything. And this is also, of course, important for security because you have one main component, one, one main extension. You have to care about updates and uh, bug fixes and so on instead of having 20 or 100. And this is the main goal why we create Sobi, Sobi Pro. OK, any questions? So well, basically, what Sobi Pro does in the front end, we are we have output in XML. Every, everything XML is... Or the... No, XML. But you can also have a JSON. Uh, but 
you have, I can tell, I can show, show you it now, but you can also have the complete information as JSON. So basically, yes, you can. Yeah, we have a workshop tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, about so, Subito. Yeah, about Subito, yeah. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> okay. Anybody else? Okay, so thank you very much.